A ransomware attack disrupted the gasoline supply for a large part of the United States, and the hackers weren't even trying to do it. Hi everyone, it's Jeff. A nice cheery subject for this Thursday morning, I know. I'm Jeff in Chicago. JR is here. He's the producer. And this full lesson is available on our website at plainenglish.com slash 369. Coming up today, in case you were looking for something else to worry about here in 2021, I've got one for you. Ransomware. This is when hackers take control of a company's computer systems and demand payment before they give the data back. And a ransomware attack shut down a major gas pipeline in the eastern United States. The worst part of it is, the real damage was an accident. We'll review a phrasal verb today that would be lock out. And JR's taking it easy this week I picked the song of the week for you. That's all coming up. But first, let's learn about ransomware, boys and girls. Ransomware comes from the word ransom. When a criminal kidnaps someone, a child or an adult, they demand payment from the person's family. That payment is called ransom. So this kind of hacking is based on the same concept. A criminal group of hackers will gain access to a company's computer systems or its data. They will then lock out the employees of the company so the company can't access their own data or systems. The hackers demand payment before they release control of the systems. The payment is usually in a cryptocurrency. Ransomware attacks are a big deal. It's impossible to know the full extent of ransomware attacks since the victims don't always reveal that they've been attacked, and companies are reluctant to say whether they've paid ransom to hackers because it's embarrassing. But one estimate says that a company is a victim of a ransomware attack every 11 seconds. And it's not just big companies either. In fact, the biggest companies with the most valuable data, think banks, insurance companies, healthcare companies, they have advanced cybersecurity programs to guard against these types of attacks. Ransomware attacks are most successful against medium sized organizations that don't have the budgets for robust cybersecurity programs, but nevertheless have enough money to pay the ransom. Manufacturing companies, government agencies, and educational institutions are big targets. A well-publicized attack against the school district in Las Vegas threatened to disclose all student grades and sensitive information about employees. School officials declined to pay the ransom, and the personal information was leaked. Organizations hit by such attacks are faced with a difficult choice. Most of the time, the data and systems can be recovered even if it costs a lot of money to do so. The threat is that sensitive data is leaked 
which could cause embarrassment, liability, or reveal secret commercial information to competitors and the world. And paying the ransom is the fastest way to recover critical systems. A company could lose a lot of money every day its systems are down. But if companies regularly pay ransom, then they will only embolden the hackers and make the problem worse for everyone else. That brings us to the colonial pipeline attack. Colonial pipeline operates a pipeline that carries diesel fuel, gasoline, and jet fuel across 11 states. It supplies just under half the gasoline for drivers on America's densely populated East Coast. Colonial Pipeline was the victim of a ransomware attack, not on the computers that operate the pipeline, but on the computer systems that run their company. But without the management system online, the company proactively shut down the pipeline while they resolved the ransomware attack. As a result, large parts of the southeastern United States faced gasoline shortages as fearful consumers rushed to fill up their tanks and hoard gas for themselves. The hackers wanted to target a medium-sized company that few people had heard of. They just wanted their money. What they did, by mistake, was shut down a critical part of the United States energy infrastructure. Multiple national agencies of the U.S. government sprang into action. The Department of Energy, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Department of Defense all started planning how to respond to the shutdown and the attack. The president was briefed. State governors took action to increase the gasoline supply. Taxes and regulations were loosened. Lines, hundreds of cars long, formed outside the gas stations that had not yet run dry. Flights had to be rerouted so they could refuel in areas not served by the pipeline. The attack turned into one of the most disruptive cyber attacks in history. Oops, the hackers tried to be smart, if that's the right word, about their work. Acting like a corporation in a scandal, the hackers, an organization called DarkSide based in Russia, they issued an apology saying they never meant to target infrastructure and clarifying that their objectives were simply to make money. They were apolitical, they said, and they didn't care about geopolitics. The last thing they wanted was the attention of the U.S. president, but that's just what they got. Later, Darkseid promised to disband. It's little comfort to companies facing cyber attacks. Colonial Pipeline is said to have paid $5 million to the hackers, according to anonymous reports, and hacking organizations are highly distributed. The organization known as DarkSide might be shutting down, but all the people involved will probably just reorganize in a different way and continue their lucrative work. Couple quick stats on ransomware. 
The average amount paid for a ransomware attack by a small business, $5,900. That means nobody's safe. That means that hackers are going after very small businesses and charging an amount that hurts, sure, but that most small businesses could come up with. The biggest ransomware payment was 10 million euros by a French construction company. The average demand, $178,000. About a quarter of companies subjected to this type of attack pay the money. If you want to become a ransomware hacker, there are starter kits available on the internet, on the dark web. The starter kits give you most of the code you need to launch a ransomware attack for just a single convenient payment of $50. Anyone can start a ransomware hacking enterprise. Scary stuff. Today's expression is lock out. It's a phrasal verb, and we usually use it in the passive voice. But first, I'll share how you heard it earlier, which is in the active voice. Earlier today, you heard that ransomware hackers lock employees out of their own systems and demand payments before they release the data or computer systems again. They lock out the employees or they lock the employees out. If you lock someone out, you prevent that person from accessing something important. However, as I mentioned, it's much more common to use this in the passive voice. For example, I'm locked out, or I've been locked out. The employees of Colonial Pipeline were locked out of their systems. They were not able to access their systems because someone else was preventing them from accessing it. They were locked out by the hackers. Have you ever forgotten your password to your bank's website? That's no problem if you're using a password manager like we talked about in Lesson 326. But if you try the wrong password three or four times, you get locked out. Even if you get it right later, you're locked out. The bank doesn't let you in. You need to call and get a new password or reset it with multi-factor authentication or something like that. At my job, we have to reset our Windows passwords every 60 days. When there's about five days left, we start getting urgent warning notices. They turn from yellow to red when there's just two days left. The notifications start to take on a panicky tone. If we don't reset our passwords by the deadline, we get locked out. We can't log into our computers. We have to call the IT department to reset the passwords. So that's locked out in a digital sense. It has a very analog meaning too. To be locked out is to be outside your house without a key when the doors are locked. You know that feeling. I luckily don't have this feeling very much. But you know that feeling when you step outside and you hear the door closing behind you, and just in that last instant, you realize that your keys are inside, 
ah, that's a terrible feeling. I'm pretty careful with my keys, so I've only been locked out of my house once in my life, believe it or not. I had to call a locksmith. The guy came and popped the door right open. It was a little disconcerting to see how easy it was, but he got it for me. If your phone rings, it's your friend, you pick up, and he says, I'm locked out. He's not talking about his bank's website. It means he's accidentally locked his door behind him, and he doesn't have any keys. He's calling you for help, or at least to keep him company. Time for JR's Song of the Week, but I nominated it this week. The song is The Down Easter Alexa by Billy Joel. It's about the struggles of a commercial fisherman on Long Island, New York, near New York City. He's trying to continue to fish enough to support his family, but he's finding it hard to catch enough fish and the costs of living on Long Island are going up too fast for him to keep up. There's no island left for islanders like me, he sings. That means that there's less and less space on Long Island for people who are originally from there, given how expensive it has become. It's a good song. It's not one of Billy Joel's big hits, but it's always been one of my favorite Billy Joel songs. The Down Easter Alexa is this week's song of the week. And that's all today. Change your passwords and use a password manager. That's all I have to say. Great job as always. I'm just so impressed with all the hard work you guys are doing in English. I hope you enjoy these lessons and this type of practice. I love hearing from you and learning all about you. So sign up as a free member to get my emails and stay in touch. It's real easy from the Plain English homepage. Just sign up for a free membership. It's the best way to stay in touch with your favorite English learning podcast, plainenglish.com. We'll be back with you again on Monday with a new topic. I don't know for sure yet, but I think we'll talk about Chile. They're going to draft a brand new constitution in Chile, and they've recently selected the representatives who will draft it. We'll definitely do a lesson about that. So I think that's going to be next Monday. We'll see. Until then, keep up the great work, and we'll see you over at plainenglish.com.